take me through the baffles this way. What are we looking at? Okay, so this is designed by uh, Clark Vargas, a, a range engineer, pretty well known. And uh, both here and on the pistol range to my left, um, the idea of the baffles is... If I'm at the shooting bench, and looking down at the frame and backer board at the 50 yard line, I see no blue sky. Right. And that is, that's a term that's used in range construction, meaning you, you should not shoot over the top of the berm. And as you can see that the repairs have been very effective here, we see no blue sky. The farthest baffle that's on the ground is designed to prevent you from shooting onto the ground and having a ricochet go over? Yes, uh, and the near one. If I, if I for some reason shoot low, I'm probably going to hit either the, the near or the farther wooden baffle and uh, stop the round there and not ricochet off the ground up over the berm. These allow more air in and more light than uh, we've seen baffled ranges before which are mm -hmm. a concrete box yeah. with roof louvers. Right. This will allow more sound out and won't create an echo chamber. I'm not uh, familiar with the one you're speaking of. Sure. But uh, I like this design very much. Yeah. So you've got a, a really big target area. If you can't hit that, probably should have some private lessons. So Lee, we had a company come in and spray the substance on the ceiling here uh, as a soundproofer. Uh, it, I'm told it's a shredded corrugated cardboard with, as the, as the company described it, an Elmer's, Elmer's glue base. So it's green. Uh, yes, very, very. I wasn't impressed with the sample they sent, uh, but now that I see it in place, it looks like it's really going to do well. Two questions. We're going to bring out a uh, decimeter to see what effect it has on sound. And also, over the course of a year or so, we'll be able to evaluate the durability. Let's go take a look at the baffles. So the baffle system is a series of 6x6 six six uprights with 2x6 lumber on, in the front, two layers, and uh, T111 plywood in the back. Tell me about the rock. The rock is a substance called stalite. As I understand it, it is uh, clay that's been run through a kiln, and it forms what looks to me like lava rock. Yeah. Uh, it's designed to shred your projectile if, in fact, you make it, you, you miss the, the shooting window, make it through two layers of two by six lumber, this will stop your projectile from going any further. Wow, safe. Now these uh, upper ones are loaded with rock too. And you had uh, inmate labor help. Yes. They, they built it under your tutelage, under your supervision. Yes, uh, Sheriff Judd, uh, Polk County Sheriff, has been uh, tremendously uh, supportive. Tell me about the berm. Well, the berms were originally built uh, between 19, 94 and 96. They have been uh, shot uh, for more than 20 years. They had uh, eroded during that time, obviously, and become uh, uh, lead filled. Uh, some uh, rather ineffective uh, attempts were made over the years, I guess, to de lead them. Um, we finally, um, because of a ricochet problem, decided to close the range down and rebuild them completely and you can see the result of that. We restored the slope of the uh, berm to his specification. We added um, five feet of height to all the berms, which is, as I, I hear, it's intended to settle to three and a half additional feet when, when all is said and done. And then this uh, pad that sticks out uh, is called ballistic sand. And that was, uh, I don't know the composition, however, I saw the contractor with four or five different soils and materials in the parking lot, mixing them together. Almost like concrete or something. Yeah, clay, sand, soils, whatever, mix it all together, put it in place, and you can see, I don't know, what's that stick out, three or four feet? Well, it seems to be sticking. Yes, it does. Right. And you got plenty of drainage now. Yeah, we uh, renewed and, and created this swale. This did not exist previously. Standing water was a big issue because of all the silting and erosion. And as you know, as a shooter, standing water is dangerous when it comes to shooting. We've got uh, 30 stations here. They're divided among three distinctly different sections so we can operate them independently. And uh, they range from seven and 15 yards to 25 and 50 yards. 
So when you say operate independently, an RSO can call cold range here and I can still continue to shoot in exactly. the one next door? Wow. We could have a class here, we could have public shooting some uh, one of the other sections, etc. What did you have to do to rehab this range? Uh, pretty much the same as a rifle range. We've rebuilt all the uh, baffles complete with the uh, Staylight rock filling. We uh, had a contractor redo the uh, drainage and the berms complete with the ballistic sand pad on the face of the berm, uh, re-slope uh, the berms to the designed uh, degree and added uh, five feet of uh, height to the berms hoping that they would settle uh, to th an additional three and a half feet in the long run. Well you did it right, there's no blue sky. No blue there? sky and we take great pains, that's, that's the number one issue when you're building berms. You can see the raw dirt on both corners and that's uh, that's a, a secondary repair that we did just to make positively sure that we're not going to have any My rounds. First time shooting in a baffled range. range of this type. Uh, I've shot in different style baffled ranges, but nothing like this. We're very curious to see what this does to the sound. Plus, we've got this really space age coating on the roof of this uh, range facility of this sh of this uh, shooting station. So we're going to give it a try. Uh, I'm kind of familiar with the sound this gun makes. So we'll see. That's really not bad at all in here. There's no echo. Um, sound doesn't reverberate. It's a lot quieter than being indoors. What do you think, Mike? Pretty nice.